There are subjects like Vastu Shastra. There are subjects like Ayurveda. I mean, we take something like Ayurveda. Again, we don't necessarily have explanatory models using the Western systems that have been developed. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. Three doshas. Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Okay, so loosely translated as air, fire and phlegm. Now, where I can download a tick sheet off the internet and look at all these different characteristics and I can tick them through and I can go, okay, predominantly I'm this dosha, secondary level I'm this dosha. And then I go to an Ayurvedic doctor and he simply feels my pulse, looks at my tongue and says, your predominant dosha is this, your secondary dosha is this. What's going on? And then we hear about in ancient times, and apparently there are still a few left, so I've heard whether this is true or not, where out of modesty, a doctor, a male doctor, wouldn't touch, physically touch a female. So he would tie string around her wrist and feel the vibration of the pulse and then determine her dosha. If this isn't genius, I don't know what is. Just that alone. Let me just go back to Jyotisha a sec. There is one thing about reading charts, and of course, how the system works, one needs to provide explanatory models for this. I have one, but it's just a model. I don't buy the idea that there are planets up there which cause a direct effect on us through gravity or electromagnetism that affect our lives and how our lives flow. There is no connection between those things. I have a very different model for that. However, there is a particular branch of astrology, of Vedic astrology, called Nadi astrology. And these are ancient leaves. Now, no one knows where they've come from. Could be hundreds of years old, a thousand years old. But legend has it that all that time back, when astrologers were apparently so good, they wrote down about the lives of everyone to come. And the gods, not being too happy about humans having this much power and knowledge, decided to send a great fire to burn them. Well, they didn't all get burnt. The ones that survived belonged to those who were apparently destined to see them. Now, it's an interesting experience with Nadi astrology. You don't go to a Nadi astrologer to get uh, interpretation done. They're not looking at a birth chart where there's subjective interpretation based on rules. What's going on here are these leaves written in whatever language, depending on where it's come from, where those leaves are required. And in there are written all these details about your life. All by merely just giving a thumbprint. And in there, a number of questions asked, and through elimination, you then find your leaf, if you're destined to see it, of course. Now, it's all a very profound experience when sitting there. Even though I've been a number of times and I've taken friends, I still am amazed just by what I, I'm amazed by the information that comes out about those individuals. Not least when the individual says, your father's name is this and your mother's name is this. How did they know? And you've come to get your leaf read at such and such age. And the positions of the, of the planets uh, when you are born are the following, such and such planet in this constellation. And it matches up with your birth chart. It boggles the mind how, we know, how the ancients knew these things. What explanation does any physicist give to this? In fact, I have a colleague who's a physicist, and I'm about to take him to go and see this guy. And he's a, he's a, he's a theoretical physicist and uh, one of the most intelligent men I've ever met, but he's boggled by this. And so, yeah, I'll be taking him.